My name is Jeremy Myers. I'm a reconstructive urologist at University of Utah Department of Surgery and the Center for Reconstructive Urology and Men's Health. I wanted to spend just a little time talking about urethroplasty and what to expect with surgery and some of the complications that I usually review with patients when they come into clinic and they're scheduled for urethroplasty. A lot depends on what type of urethroplasty is done as far as the recovery from urethroplasty and what to expect. Talking generally about urethroplasty, I tell men that they should probably plan on being off work while the catheter is in place. For some urethroplasties, this may be as little as two weeks, and other urethroplasties we keep the catheter in place for three weeks. After the catheter is removed, mostly men can return to any type of work they do. There's no lifting restrictions or anything like this. When we're able to just remove the scar tissue and reconnect the urethra, this is what we call an excision in primary anastomosis, patients have the catheter in for approximately two weeks. Then they come back to clinic and we do a special x-ray in clinic. I do the x-ray myself and we make sure the urethra has healed completely. Occasionally we'll see where a stitch wasn't placed quite right or a stitch is broken and when we do the x-ray we see a little bit of contrast dye come out of the edge of the repair. So it's not leakage like a man's leaking urine out of the penis but it's leakage where we sewed everything together. In these cases we have to replace the catheter and leave it in for two or three weeks longer. As you can imagine this is a, always a big dis disappointment to men who are coming in and are very ready to get their catheter removed and they feel like there's a big problem with the surgery that the surgery will fail them. However, most of the time an additional amount of time for drainage allows the area to heal and then we can remove the catheter safely in two or three weeks. Fortunately, this complication is pretty rare and I only see this, I would estimate, in about one out of 20 men or so that undergo urethroplasty and I'd estimate the rate's approximately 5%. Now if men undergo a buccal graft urethroplasty, which is stripping out a piece of tissue from the mouth to rebuild the urethra, then they have to have their catheter in for approximately three weeks before we do the x-ray and remove the urethral catheter. Immediately after the surgery, men are admitted overnight for the most part and they can leave the next day. They typically leave the hospital with pain medicine, antibiotics, and then also sometimes will employ Valium to suppress erections at night. Men take the Valium just before bed and they tend to sleep much deeper and erections don't bother them as much during night. You can imagine after undergoing a urethral surgery due to the stretching in the area and just having a catheter in the penis that erections are very painful. In some ways they're good. They get blood flow to the area, they stretch out the repair a little bit and prevent recurrent scarring. I've never seen a case where the erections pulled apart the repair. Men are often really worried about this, that the erections will pull out a stitch, etc. But these stitches are very securely placed and I've never seen this as a consequence of the surgery. Sometimes we'll also discharge men with a medicine to relax the bladder because when the catheter is in place, men can feel a painful sensation that they need to urinate despite the catheter draining the bladder. Catheters don't always drain the bladder perfectly and very frequently men will have some leakage around the catheter, especially when they go to have a bowel movement. This isn't of real concern. If the catheter is not draining at all, then often it's clogged with some debris in the catheter and needs to be irrigated. If this occurs after urethroplasty, uh, the patient should see us in clinic or go to an after-hours clinic or emergency department to have the catheter irrigated. One thing that I always caution patients about, though, is not to let anyone other than myself or one of our staff remove the catheter. It's very important that it stay in place and uh, allow healing of the area of the urethroplasty. The follow-up after urethroplasty is very important. We usually have patients come in three months after the catheter has been removed and then 12 months after the surgery. What we do at this appointment is measure the flow 
we collect some questionnaire data about how patients are doing with sexual function, pain, and that sort of thing. And then most importantly, we perform a cystoscopy of the area, which is sliding a flexible scope right into the area of repair and examining it under the scope. The patients are able to see exactly what we see, and we can see whether the area has narrowed or whether it's healed wide open. And this allows us to give patients a lot of information about the future and whether the stricture surgery is going to work for them or not. The outcomes of most urethroplasty are very good. They're usually greater than 80% at resolving the stricture and patients not needing to have additional surgery or procedures, dilations, internal cutting type procedures in the future. But coming in for the three month and 12 month cystoscopy will really allow us to tell you what your likelihood is that the urethral stricture surgery is gonna work long term. It gives us and also you as a patient very important information about the future and how closely you need to be followed. For instance, if we identified some narrowing, we weren't able to pass the scope through the area of repair, then we might say, you should be followed very closely with a cystoscopy every year to make sure the narrowing doesn't become worse over time. And then as a patient has an increase in symptoms, we might do an internal cutting surgery in the future. Patients that don't have symptoms, however, usually we just follow very closely. Hopefully your cystoscopy will show that the area is wide open and we can reassure you at a year that the likelihood of having additional surgeries is relatively low. A lot of men are very fearful about these procedures because they've had traumatic procedures in the past where someone has tried to place a catheter in the emergency department when they couldn't urinate or a urologist has dilated the stricture in clinic which is very painful and can be very traumatic. I can assure you that these exams are very gentle. They take very little time. We slide a scope right into the area of repair, look at it, the patient can see the area, and then we withdraw the scope. Very often we don't even have to go up into the bladder past the area of repair. And this is often what causes a lot of discomfort with scopes, is passing the scopes through the sphincter muscles into the bladder. And this isn't necessary when we're surveilling for stricture recurrence after surgery. I think you'll be surprised when you come in for the cystoscopy and you'll find that it's not very painful and it also reassures you that the stricture area has healed very well or if it hasn't, and we have important information and we'll follow you a lot more closely. The second thing I wanted to talk about in this video was the risks of the surgery. All surgeries have risk, but urethroplasty has some very specific risks that you need to know before you undergo the surgery. Unfortunately, most men don't have much choice about the surgery. They've failed previous dilations and internal cutting surgery and urethroplasty is really the only option for them. However, it's still very important to understand the risks. The main risk, I say, is that the urethral stricture surgery won't work and the scar will come back. Fortunately, this is relatively rare. Uh, the success of urethroplasty, as I've mentioned before, is about 80%, and it's even better when you consider symptomatic recurrences of the stricture. So it's 80% when we examine it with a cystoscope, and we might find some men where, they, where the men have narrowing of the previous surgery, but they don't feel any symptoms. And we might say, well, I'm sorry, the surgery has not worked out perfectly. And the men say, what are you talking about? I am peeing greater than I've ever peed in my life. And those men we don't necessarily need to do anything about. We just follow them very closely to make sure that the stricture doesn't narrow further. So if you look at clinical success, in other words, men feeling that their urinary flow is better than it was before surgery, the surgery is about 90% or greater at clinical success. Occasionally, we do have to do internal cutting surgeries after urethroplasty to try and salvage the surgery. And this can salvage the surgery depending on what study you look at in anywhere from 15 to 50% of patients. I usually tell patients it can salvage the surgery in about 25% of cases where we have significant narrowing. 
and it's usually the first thing that we do. And the, often the reason that it works, whereas the first internal cutting surgery didn't work, is that often we see a very flimsy recurrence that's very narrow, and internal cutting surgery can work well for this type of recurrence. Men that have symptoms from a recurrent stricture also sometimes need a repeat urethroplasty. Fortunately, repeat urethroplasty is about as successful as the first urethroplasty. It's a very viable option, and the success rate isn't perfect compared to the first time urethroplasty, but it really probably only drops by about 10% compared to the first urethroplasty. So men can have a very successful outcome with redo urethroplasty. We do many redo urethroplasties each year at University of Utah. Patients that are sent in who have uh, the surgery has failed um, from outside uh, institutions or they had urethroplasty many years ago and the stricture has come back over time. The other risks I want to talk about have to do uh, with the specifics of the surgery. There's a small risk of damage to the nerves in the arms or legs, and this has to do with the position that we put patients in. We have to put their legs up pretty far to get into the area of the perineum, and this can stretch nerves that go down to the feet. And so patients can end up with a nerve injury to the feet where they might feel that the soles of their feet are numb or they have a painful sensation as they're walking. Fortunately, this is very rare. We only see uh, one or two cases of this in the years that I've been at University of Utah, and those cases have resolved given a little bit of time. The time might be a few days or a few months. The other thing that can happen is we have the patient's arms out to their side, and that can stretch nerves in the elbows, and patients can end up with a couple fingers that are numb or they have a painful tingling sensation along the distribution of the nerve that goes through the elbow. These cases also generally resolve over time, although sometimes the damage can be permanent. We have not seen a permanent case of these types of problems. The other issue that we sometimes see is a very painful scrotum or perineum. In order to get into the area of the urethroplasty, we have to stretch apart the tissue of the perineum. And there are very fine nerves that come up to this area. And when the retractors stretch apart these areas, those nerves can be crushed and they can cause pain in the scrotum and perineum. I would estimate that we see this complication in about 20% of patients, depending on the type of urethroplasty we perform. Fortunately, in the vast majority of the patients, it's just transitory and they have some pain around the time of the surgery and then it rapidly resolves. But we've seen a few cases where the pain took months to go away and was quite bothersome to patients. And I'd estimate there's about a 1% risk or 2% risk that patients would have some element of permanent pain that bothered them, for instance, at the end of a hard day of work. Other problems that we sometimes see with urethroplasty is a little bit of pooling of urine that occurs in the area of the surgery. Particularly when we use a buccal graft from the inner cheek, we create a large superurethra through the area of scar. And in this area, urine can pool after a patient urinates, and they can leak out the small amount of urine later on. It's usually a teaspoon or so. And often men find a way of draining this urine at the time of urination, such as a little bit of pressure on the perineum as they drain out the urethra. This can also occur with ejaculation. When a man ejaculates, the semen can pool in this area, and rather than shooting out of the tip of the penis, as is typical with ejaculation, it can ooze out the tip of the penis. And this can be a problem for some men for achieving pregnancy in the future. I found this to be a relatively rare problem uh, with problems with fertility, but I've certainly seen one or two patients where it was an issue. A lot of men have these problems anyways with the urethral scar because the urethral scar or stricture traps the semen or traps the urine in the area between the sphincter muscles and the scar, and this tends to drain out over time. So patients, even though they may have this problem, it may actually be better after surgery than compared to before surgery. So the other problems that men always ask about 
is erectile dysfunction or sexual dysfunction, and also urinary leakage. Fortunately, the, most of the urethral surgery we do is very far away from the urethral sphincters. And even when the scars really come very close to the sphincter, the sphincter functions very well after urethral surgery. This may not be true for other causes of urethral strictures like pelvic fracture or radiation damage, but for most routine cases, there is very, very low risk of incontinence after this type of surgery. Erections, likewise, the nerves are very far from the area of most common urethral surgeries. Many urethroplasty experts say there is virtually no risk of long-term erectile dysfunction, but I think there are occasional men that can have damage to their erections in the area of the perineum. And certainly the closer we come to the prostate and to the sphincters, the higher the risk of erectile dysfunction. But I still state that it's very low for most men. Even when the stricture really is very close to the, uh, the uh, sphincter muscle, the risk, I would estimate, is about 5 to 10 percent of any damage to the erections. If there is damage to the erections, this doesn't mean that the damage is necessarily permanent. Many men will recover their erectile function over time if they do have damage. We see this a lot in pelvic fracture, where the nerves to the, the erections are almost universally damaged. And some of these men will have regrowth of the nerves and will have their erections come back over time. If a patient does have some erectile problems, often this is the case after urethroplasty as well. Some men will respond to medicines such as taking something like Viagra or Sildenafil or the other types of medicines in that family or injections of a medicine in the penis. Well, so these are some of the risks that men face with urethroplasty surgery, and it's very important that they recognize these risks, although most men go through the surgery and do just fine and have very little long-term problems with their urethral surgery. Urethroplasty is not easy to go through, and I never tell men that, but most men are in the position where they don't have a lot of choice about undergoing the surgery. Their urination is terrible, or they're dependent on a catheter like a suprapubic tube, or a urethral catheter and they have to do something or they're going to be dependent on the catheter for life. Fortunately, even though the surgery may be hard to go through and there are some complications to be aware of, urethroplasty is very successful. Like I said, greater than 80 percent success and maybe even higher when you consider just a man's perspective on his urinary flow. So I hope this was helpful. It's always anxiety provoking to talk about the risks of surgery and the specifics of surgery, but I really like patients to be fully prepared for the surgery that they're going to undergo and make sure that they understand the risks that they're facing and also what the success rate is. We can't maintain that urethroplasty or any surgery is going to be 100% successful. But what I can tell you is if you have problems with your urethral surgery, we'll be with you the whole way to deal with those problems after surgery. And fortunately, that is very rare. Most men do very well and have a good successful outcome with this type of surgery.